Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. This is Albert back again talking to you. And today, I'm very glad to discuss with you about one thing that is uh, the most important thing in our Christian life. Uh, I call it the most important thing. I just qualify it like that because uh, this is the only one that uh, sets a difference between us, children of God, and the world. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm about to share with you is something important that separates us, separates us from the world. A sign between us and the world. What I want to share with you today is nothing more than what you know, you sing, you pray for. It's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Where does the Spirit come from? How do we receive it? Who is allowed allowed to have that spirit in him and who doesn't? We are going to discover together this. We are going to find answers to these questions together in the word of God. First of all, I said that this is the only thing that separates separate us from the world. I say that this is the only thing that sets a difference between us Christians and the world. But is it something that was made only for us? It means something that began with, the, with, with, with Christ only. Is it something that began on the day of Pentecost? Do people in the ancient time have that or not. The only difference that we can see here is that in the ancient time, in the old covenant, only people called prophets could be visited by the Spirit of God. Only people called prophets, people speak the messengers of God, only God's messengers could be visited by the Spirit of God. We can see this uh, in the book of Genesis. We can see this in the book of Genesis. Uh, let's read together. In the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 41, uh, verse 38. This talks about Joseph. So Pharaoh asked them, his counselors, Can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the Spirit of God? Pharaoh, after listening to Joseph, <clears throat> Joseph explaining what was the dream that uh, Pharaoh had and gave a plan to escape to, 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 to the disaster. Pharaoh recognized the Spirit of God in the young man called Joseph. The Spirit of God. So only few people could be visited or have the Spirit of God. It was not everybody. Uh, we can see that also in Numbers. Numbers chapter 24, verse 2. Numbers chapter 24, verse 2. I read in the name of Jesus. When Balaam looked out and saw Israel encamped tribe by tri tribe, by tribe 
the Spirit of God came on him. When Balaam, this is a story you know very well. Balaam called to curse the to curse people of God, to curse God's people, to curse Israel. But when he looked at them, when he saw them in came tribe by tribe, the Spirit of God came immediately on him to communicate not what he was called to do, but what God wanted. If you read the, the, what comes after, it says, and, God, uh, and Balaam started to prophesy, to prophesy, and he thought, it was not Balaam talking, it was not Balaam speaking, but God in Balaam. This is why those people in the ancient time who were visited by the Spirit of God, people who were speaking in place of God, at the time that the Spirit visited them, they were not themselves talking, speaking, but God in them. That, that's how things were done, were done in the ancient time, in the Old Covenant. God, the Spirit of God only visited some people at a certain time just to communicate a, a, a specific message. And at the time that the person was talking, it's not a person. At the time, he's visited by the Spirit of God. It's God using his body. Because God, to communicate with human beings, uh, he needs somebody, a human being, somebody in a, in a human body, somebody in a human form. So God materializes, materializes himself, or the Spirit of God materializes itself in a body. In the Old Covenant, some people were selected to be God's speakers. It's like using a microphone. That's the way it was in the ancient time. One of such people, I mean people who were there to, 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 to speak for God, people who were used as microphone, people in whom God... Uh, could through whom God could communicate his will, prophesied about our nation today, our holy nation. He prophesied about our time, time in which you and I live. The life we are experiencing, one of those people prophesied about it. He was not himself talking, but God in him. God visited him and spoke those words describing this time, this very moment that you and I are living in. Let us see that in Joel. That prophet is Joel. Joel chapter 2. Uh, Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, uh, verse 28 and 29. I read in Jesus' name. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. In the days you and I are living in. In the days you and I are living in. This is the kind of life you and I are experiencing the life prophesied by Joel. It was not Joel talking, but God. Because Joel was using the I. I will. I will do. I will pull out my spirit. This is why I said 
Uh, once one was visited by the Spirit of God, once one was talking, speaking uh, by the Spirit of God, he was not himself. He was like dead, and the Spirit in him was speaking. God in him was speaking, communicated, communicating the message, the news he wants people uh, to have. He wants people uh, to know. He wants people to hear. So here was not Joel talking, but the Spirit of God, or God in Joel. It was God in Joel talking, like God in Jesus teached people during his ministry. Praise God for that. 